welcome back to DNDSL. Um, sorry I haven't been able to post recently. Work has been especially busy over the past few weeks because of um, exams. But they're all finished now, so I have a bit more time. And I honestly feel that this video is long overdue. So I'd rather get this out before I do another crafting video. As you can probably guess, I had to cut this experiment short. Largely because of preparation for students' exams. Fortunately, yeah, students needed time to prepare for some other exams of mine, um, a lot of exams in other courses, and some national or public exams. However, I did manage to get a few more sessions in with classes A and B, and I have a few observations to note about them. The first thing is that the the group character idea didn't really work as well as I'd hoped. What tended to happen with each group was that um, one one player tended to dominate the roleplay aspect. With class A I tried to institute like a speaking stick system or something. Similar like, like this one is a designated speaker. It worked up until a point, but not as well as I think it could have. Which brings me to a rather weird observation. I noticed that quite a few of the students thought that they needed to record all of their roles on the character sheet. So if they, if they make like a skill check or like roll for wisdom, say make a wisdom check, they'll do it and then they'll write the result on the, on the character sheet. I found a, this happened with a couple of different classes and so what can we take away from this? Well, my first observation is that large groups are a pain in the neck, which should be obvious to anyone who's done this before. Yeah, um, I found the group character concept to be not particularly useful. And if I were to do this again, I would definitely not use this um, or implement this with a class that was large enough that required me to use group characters like four students to one character. Yeah, I would not do that again. Um, secondly, obviously, roleplay needs to come first. I think. Some of my students got a bit more bogged down in the mechanics and caught, caught up in the rolling of dice. That's why we have students constantly recording their roles, which I found strange. Um, this does make me think, though, that something like this could be very viable for my culture class next semester. And the third point is that an experiment like this requires a lot more time than I had available, um, especially to see in any appreciable um, improvement in a student's confidence and in their abilities. Although I do have one thing to note but I'm not entirely sure it's related to um, these D&D sessions. As part of my assessment, I get my students to perform a presentation. And as part of that presentation, I ask them to answer questions either from their classmates or from me. Yeah, I do this to one, make sure that their classmates actually listen to each other when they when they do their speeches rather than just sit there on their phones or something like that. 
I also make a note of how many students volunteer to ask questions um, during these presentations. And what I found very much surprised me, so I've mentioned before how class B is usually the least likely to speak, or well, students in class B are very reluctant to speak most of the time. But I found that during these presentations, which started after after I started doing the D&D sessions, more of those students spoke up. All right, so so my exams are all finished, all done and marked. My students other exams are almost all finished as well. It's basically the end of a semester. What can be done going forward with this kind of concept? The first thing we can do is play online, which I would rather not do. Yeah. I would very much prefer to do this kind of thing face to face. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the students who live in the same city as me are ones who don't necessarily need this kind of help. Many of them have already got very good English and are near the top of their class in the first place, so <laughs> this feels like a poor measure for them. Um, and I do not want to do online RPG with students. In part because a lot of um, RPG tools like D&D Beyond and Roll20 are either blocked where we live or at the very heavily throttled um, to the point where you can't really use them at all anyway. My next option is to run games with small, uh, specific groups of students next semester. This seems more possible and more likely. A couple of students have expressed interest in doing something like this. And this could also allow me to get groups that are either the same English level or have the same uh, needs in terms of English skills and I can tailor sessions around that so that's that's one option that I like um, another option is to modify this and use it in my foreign culture course next semester I think I mentioned this before, I think this is quite doable, It, however it requires my course to be one, just popular enough, it requires my course to be just popular enough to run in the first place, but not popular enough to have a very large group of students. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have the letter. Another option, or another thing I could try to do here in terms of content for this channel would be to try introducing some of my students to other games. Uh, aside from simply D&D or other role-playing games. I'm thinking possibly skirmish games and seeing how they react to this. Yeah, so look at like, do, do the students find this kind of thing interesting? How could this be applied to learning? Or like especially in how could it be applied to learning English? This could be quite interesting in terms of content for the channel. So I'd be happy to see how that goes. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and feel free to leave a comment below.
about what you think of this. I'm going to be up at my in-laws for the next few weeks, which is going to make recording sound a bit more difficult than usual. But hopefully we should be able to do some sightseeing and this could give me some inspiration for future crafting videos. But again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.